What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to talk to you guys about how a car engine works. But before I do that, let me just say I know I haven't been making videos in a while, been very busy. Um, I have been working on a couple of other videos. They are very long process videos and I'm not so good at editing. They take a little while for me to do. So like I said, today I'm going to be talking about how car engines work and just kind of really the basics. I'm not going to overload anybody with all crazy terminologies and words that might confuse someone. So I'm just going to simply explain how the engine works and how it moves your car uh, in the most basic terms possible. So everybody can try and understand. Now I have my own definitions and my own vocabulary of how I believe based on my own experience and knowledge on how on what an engine is. I don't know the correct definition of an engine. But so the real question is, what is a car engine? So in basic terms, a car engine is a big piece of metal that is inside your car that generates a form of power that gets transmitted to the wheels of your vehicle that moves your vehicle. That is the most simple and basic term I can break it down in. So let's talk a little bit about what the engine is actually doing that could possibly move your so-called wheels on your car. So how your engine operates is through a, a, a form of, it's a rotating mass. So by rotating mass, there are mechanical parts inside this big piece of metal that rotate at uh, high speeds. The higher speed that they move at, the more power it generates. There are multiple components uh, that are applied to this. Just to keep things simple, I'll explain exactly how it creates this power, this mechanical power. Then I will tell you how it gets transmitted to the wheels of your car. So you fill your car up with gasoline. That gasoline, then that gasoline moves from your gas tank into a conformed area called your combustion chamber. Your combustion chamber has something called a spark plug in it with some kind of igniter. So a, a spark plug is essentially an igniter. It ignites fuel. So you have the fuel coming in from your gas tank, you have your spark plug. So when the fuel goes into this combustion chamber, your spark plug then ignites the fuel into a controlled explosion. And then you add another element. There is a piece of metal that comes upward called a piston. When your piston comes up and this explosion happens, the piston then gets pushed back downwards. And then you have multiple pistons on your engine. So when one piston's going downwards, another piston's going upwards. So say you have an engine with uh, two pistons. When the controlled explosion happens from the fuel leaving your gas tank and the spark plug igniting the fuel and that piston gets forced down because of the explosion, the other piston gets shot back up and the cycle repeats again. So when that fuel goes to that and the spark hits that, that piston then goes down and then repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. And then you get into this mechanical motion of these two pistons going up and down. And that's what generates power. The faster that they move, the faster the fuel gets there, the faster the spark happens, the more RPMs, RPM stands for revolutions per minute, the more faster that this moves, this process happens, This the, the faster that this chemical reaction happens of the gasoline and the spark plug, igniting, making a combustion that moves that piston up and down, the faster that moves, the more power your engine will make. So now that you have the engine essentially running, how does that running engine get power transmitted to the wheels of your car to get your car moving? So your engine, uh, your two pistons on your engine that are simultaneously moving up and down are on a sort of pivot point called your crankshaft. Your crankshaft has is is a is is essentially a straight shaft in the middle. It's literally like a metal rod. Like if you looked at a, I'm trying to compare it to something here in my room, but I don't think I have anything. Essentially, if you think of a a steel rod, it's just a piece of steel going straight. That piece of steel is weighted and balanced and has heavier pieces of metal on the outside of it 
to create momentum. That crankshaft has something called counterweights. It's to balance out that steel rod and also create momentum. Those big weights, when they move, creates this force and, and it creates torque. Torque is essentially brute force power. Count metal counterweights on this metal shaft essentially are creating more and more and more momentum based on the controlled explosion on your two moving simultaneous pistons. So you have this crankshaft that's rotating your two pistons together at two uh, opposing kind of timing and directions. You have this crankshaft. On the end of this crankshaft is essentially a form of connector in simple terms. Your crankshaft gets mechanically linked to your transmission. Your transmission is essentially, just think of it as uh, a gear. Just think of your transmission as a set of multiple gears. You can uh, go higher speeds or lower speeds. Just think of your transmission as a set of multiple gears that are used to go higher speeds and lower speeds while still having your engine not be at peak power all the time. It's a it's essentially a reducer. A transmission is essentially a, a power reducer. Um, personally, that's what I believe it does. Um, or, uh, Im or it's to improve power. It, it depends on what's really used, but for economic and commercial regular car uses, you know, I'm gonna say it's a power reducer. It kind of reduces the power from the engine and transmits that power to the rear wheels or the front wheels of your car. So you have your engine, you have your crankshaft, your crankshaft is connected mechanically to your transmission. Your transmission then transmits that power through something called a drive shaft or an axle. That axle is then connected to your wheel and that is what is creating the momentum of getting your wheels rolling on your car. So essentially you have many, 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 many minor components that are applied to this, but this is the most basic on how explaining on how an engine functions in order to move the wheels on your car. So you have your engine, which is essentially a big block of metal. You have your combustion chamber, which is for a controlled explosion to move your pistons, which is controlled by your crankshaft, which your crankshaft is then locked to your transmission then your transmission transmits that power to your drive shaft or axle and your drive shaft and axle is connected to your wheel and your car. That is very basic. This is, I, I don't really think there's any more of a basic way on how this can be explained. I will kind of uh, draw something out really quick to kind of just show a, you know, a more a detailed idea instead of just talking about it. Let me do that really quick and I'll show you. So, so this is essentially what we have going on here. This is your engine. This kind of t-shirt looking design is called your engine block. Inside your engine, you have your pistons. So these two square looking things with these two uh, rectangular looking things sticking out of them are called your pistons. So these are your pistons. This like lightly highlighted area is called your combustion chamber. These are called your spark plugs right here. Spark plugs, combustion chamber. So what happens is, is you get fuel. So picture that this line is your fuel and you're coming in from your gas tank into the combustion chamber. So you got your fuel coming in, goes into the combustion chamber, gets ignited by the spark and the spark plug. That spark, then creates an explosion when it ignites the gasoline, pushes the piston down, which then rotates the crankshaft and these counterweights use that momentum and transmits that momentum to this right here, 
which I call them a set of multiple gears, also known as your transmission. That is not what a transmission looks like, but I just tried drawing a bunch of circles with gear teeth on it to make it look like it's a bunch of gears because um, that's essentially what a transmission is. So you have multiple sets of gears, aka your transmission right here, gets taken from your transmission, then put into your drive shaft and or axle, depending on if you have a front wheel drive, all wheel drive or rear wheel drive car, then through your drive shaft or axle, then gets transmitted to the wheels of your car. So just a little recap, you got your gas coming in, gets put into the combustion chamber, gets ignited by the spark plugs. Then from your spark plugs, it can make an explosion, pushes the piston down, which rotates the crankshaft and the momentum that is created by the crankshaft and the counterweights gets mechanically connected to your transmission. Your transmission takes that power and transmits it to your drive shaft or axle. And then your drive shaft or axle transmits that power to your wheel. So that is really just the complete and utter basics of explaining how an engine operates and how it delivers power to the wheels of your car to get your car moving. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, hopefully I will be doing more of these videos kind of just like little how-to or educational videos explaining how things work and uh, how things uh, could possibly work better or just explaining more about cars in general. So take care. I will catch you guys in the next video.